Picture this. You're on the beach watching the sunset, and you see a guy about this tall on a bike with a surfboard in his bike rack. With one arm, he's strumming a guitar and dribbling a basketball with the other. He's playing chess with his mom and switching between speaking French and German. It's Nick. Then you see a girl standing next to him. She's wearing ballet shoes in the sand. Weird. She's in a wetsuit, riding her unicycle, balancing a soccer ball on her head. She's holding a charcuterie board and listening to her favorite album, Hamilton. Oh wait, it's Julia. As you can probably tell, we like to consider ourselves fairly rounded people. And for that, we have our passions to thank. Now, we want you to picture yourself like we did. Where are you? What shoes are you wearing? What's in your left hand? In your right? We want you to keep that same image in your mind throughout the entirety of this talk. So, passions. The word passion itself is pretty general, so it's best we break it down. A passion is something that you are enthusiastic about, something that excites you and honestly makes you feel like a kid again. Don't you remember how excited you were as a kid about pretty much everything? Hearing that bell for lunch, knowing you could go defend your throne in Foursquare, or asking your mom for money before school because you knew your class would be visiting the book fair. Now, obviously, I wouldn't say I was passionate about the book fair, but this sense of excitement and that sense of eagerness, this is what it's all about. That is what passion does for you. Like many kids, we both grew up playing a ton of rec sports and participating in different activities. I spent most of my time playing soccer and dancing, while Nick played soccer and basketball. And was also forced to do musical theater. Thanks, As Mom. we grew older, however, we began dedicating more of our time to specific activities. I chose to pursue dance. Well, I went the other route and stuck with basketball. We spent countless hours training, conditioning, and practicing these sports in hopes of one day being able to play them at high levels. From a young age, I knew I wanted to be a dancer. I dedicated myself to 20-hour weeks of rehearsals and spent every waking moment thinking about the art. As a result, I drastically grew as a dancer and even hoped to pursue it as a career in the future. And it was great, until it wasn't. As I grew older, I began to realize I didn't quite fit the stereotypical body type of a ballerina. I began to take note that my legs weren't long enough or I wasn't as skinny as the principal dancer I'd always looked up to. Now, unfortunately, this unhealthy mindset is no stranger in the dance community. There are thousands of stories of dancers who silently struggled and eventually quit the art because of the cruel body standards we're pressured to live up to. And I'm sure I would have been just another one of those stories had I not had other passions to find peace in. During my junior year basketball season, I started off the year slow. But over time, I earned a starting spot, and I was playing well. I thought to myself, nice, I made it over the hump. I'm good now. However, things took a turn again. I got way too comfortable. My quality of play deteriorated, and naturally, I lost my minutes. I was crushed. Practically every day since my freshman year, I had spent my mornings and my afternoons at the local YMCA. Working on my craft, all I had on my mind was finally getting to that varsity stage. I figured that all the hard work I was putting in would simply carry over to school basketball and that I would be guaranteed a successful season. But, and this goes for everything in our lives, nothing is ever guaranteed. When I got there with high hopes and expectations, to see these aspirations not be met was really like a punch to the gut. Tons of other people have experienced the same struggles as Nick and I. I found myself falling back on my other passions, such as soccer, where I could take a step back and truly enjoy myself. After having a bad dance rehearsal, I was able to go to field hockey or soccer practice and sprint out my frustrations, or simply have a good time with my teammates. Because I had these other outlets in my life, I was able to find peace with myself and my relationship with dance. I'm happy to say I now still love to dance and plan to continue for as long as I possibly can. To me, this adversity was exactly what I needed not only as a basketball player, but also as a kid going through life. It showed me that nothing is ever given, and to stay at the top, we really do have to work as if we're at the bottom. And like Julia, it made me appreciate all the other passions and interests I had that helped me bounce back. I like to consider my passions outside of basketball as a kind of pit stop, allowing myself to get my mind off of my struggles on the court, playing the guitar or spending time outside, filled up my motivational tank, and change my tires and my mindset for the road ahead. 
We have come to discover that there are two different types of passions. There are the work hard passions and the play hard passions. The work hard passions are the ones to which we dedicate a great deal of our time and expect success as a result. With high expectations, however, comes a level of disappointment when things don't completely go our way. I consider my work hard passion to be dance. Well, mine is basketball. I can speak for Julia when I say we both love our sport. It's our main passion for a reason. We love working hard and putting in that extra effort to get better. However, everyone knows that the path to success is not a straight line, that there will be bumps along the way. I can recall more than one or two memories of coming home after a poor performance on the court. No social media, no party, nothing could keep me from thinking about the loss. So when we can't help but dwell on our losses and need a break from our primary activity, what do we turn to? This leads us to our second type of passion. Play hard passions are the ones we partake in solely for the experience. With these activities, there are no strings attached and we expect nothing but a good time. When I sit down to play the guitar, I do not expect myself to go full on John Mayer, even though I'll admit that would be pretty cool. When I do mess up, I don't throw my guitar away and cry about it. Now, do I want to get better? Of course. Just because I don't consider the guitar my work hard passion does not mean that I can't strive to improve. But my expectations for success are not as high because I am completely aware of how much time I put aside. I simply play for the fun of it. And that's the point. These other things in our lives are merely there to lift us up and help us lose track of time. For example, the two of us are never the best surfers out on the water, but we do it because we love it. Dedication to one thing does not mean that we can't also pursue other interests. For example, Deion Sanders was a professional football and baseball player. And Avril Lavigne, the well-known musician, was an avid hockey player before she took to the stage. Now, obviously, no one is expected to play two pro sports or become a world-renowned singer, but it certainly shows that these two very dedicated individuals never limited themselves. When we put all of our marbles into one basket, we miss out on opportunities to learn new things, meet new people, and develop new passions. Many people often get burned out or lose interest in something altogether because they spent so much of their time on this one thing. That's why it's so important to have a variety of outlets. A variety of ways to bring you joy. Because in life, nothing is consistently perfect. People have bad days. Relationships have bad days. Practices have bad days. It's so crucial that in times of distress, we have the chance to turn to something that is merely there to bring us a sense of happiness and content. So, if you're interested in something, don't be afraid to try it. It's perfectly healthy to pursue new and multiple passion. Don't leave yourself wondering what could have been. What if I'd never asked for a red unicycle for Christmas? Or what if I'd never squeezed into that extra small wetsuit and paddled out to surf? Or tried my luck with guitar? So why are we asking ourselves what if when we really should be asking ourselves why not? If you're going to walk away from this talk with one thing, we want it to be this. Dedicate yourself. But act on your curiosity. Be persistent. But don't be afraid to use your outlets. Work hard. But play harder. Thank, Thank you. you.